we're doing a show. It's about Counter-Strike uh, and it's called Feed the Trolls. I troll the internet, so HLTV forums, Reddit, X, to find cool Counter-Strike topics that everyone is talking about. And then I bring in Thorin himself, the esports historian, the big brains, the analysts, all these people are going to come in and then we're going to discuss those topics and decide if you're wrong or right or how we feel about them. Who knows where it's going to go. Hopefully we can get you an episode every week, but we'll see. It'll depend on schedules, but this is it. This is episode one. So if you don't want to miss a single episode, hit subscribe or maybe watch the episode first. See if you like it. But yeah, I'm going to stop talking. Watch this. Welcome to the first episode of Feed the Trolls. And we have a pretty interesting discussion because this is one that's on the internet all the time. And it is, is Hooksy the right IGL for G2? I got two people here who are going to give their insight. Thorin, uh, which most people probably know exactly where he stands on this particular topic because he's tweeted about it enough. Uh, and we've also got Nero who's coming in. Uh, but before we get into that whole conversation about Hooksy himself, I actually want to talk about G2 and their performance because I think it's important to preface this whole conversation with that, Nero. And in the fact that for a lot of teams, constantly getting to the playoffs is probably something they dream about doing. For G2, though, it's just not enough. On G2 as a whole, I think people have always had super, super high expectations because it's just name, it's the name value of Nico and Hunter and everything. But I think it's really important to set out at the start of CS2. Like, this is, there is enough change in the game here. We do need to re, we do need to change the way we look at these names that are so household names, like for so long, right? And I think with, with G2, that is probably why people are expecting just trophies every week. But they, they've never been at trophies every week, see? They've never been that even in CSGO, even with JKS with whatever IGL they've had. So it's 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 hard to say it when you've got Manasi, who is the best player in the world, but you don't want to take all these top fours for granted either because there's a lot of teams who don't actually manage to do all these top fours, right? So I think it, we'll, we'll start there. We'll start there. Give them a break. But um, yes, they do have the best player in the world. So you do want a trophy sometime soon. I mean, Thorin, he just said it. They have the best player in the world. The best player is not lifting trophies in CS2. How long do you get to keep the best player? I mean, that's the problem. One, there's a reason why, apparently. I mean, if people don't know, this goes through the sort of semi-dodgy Russian news sites, which themselves will even put a mad line in, like, this comes from a totally incredible source who's been wrong about a lot of things. So there's basically rumours now that Monacy is potentially talking to a bunch of teams and he might indeed leave. I'm not surprised because I noticed there what Nero did there was he slowly backed into the dry way, making all points. You know, it's a different game, expectations. They didn't win all the time before. And then right at the end, he just backed out. like he went, But they've got the best player in the world, so I guess. Yes, you probably should win a thing or two. Whoa, whoa, what the f That doesn't go at the end. That goes at the beginning. Like, here's the problem. Let's start with G2 of the Org. G2 of the Org has been world championship in like every game except CS. Yes, that's a massive problem. I used to make the joke when Carlos was there. Bro, his wife was French. Like, her favorite game was CS. I used to say, you have your only team that doesn't win is the French CS team. You've got to get this fixed. And so obviously, they want the championships as an Org that's trying to be the biggest Org in the world. When you have like this ESWC, they want to win that. They want to win the, the big prize you get for being the best Org. So for G2, G2 already. There's no budget there, even though if people don't know, actually sometimes G2 and Vitality don't have the highest salaries. In fact, far from it. They just use the appeal of the org and big stars to draw other people in to play for sometimes like three quarters of a big salary. So first of all, I'll say there, it's not like they're paying more money than God for everyone. It's not like JKS was too expensive. And then also, yeah, it's a different game. But here's the problem. If it's a different game, then Hooksy's out tomorrow, my dude, because in this game, they're trash. Like in this game, they had one tournament ever where they almost made the final. That was against Na'Vi at the major. And part of that, because Na'Vi, like even though bizarrely they won the final, they actually are mad sus on ancient mate. Like essentially everything in the universe said, well done, between literally people potentially threatening the lives of mouse sports who were all already scared on the stage. Stage. And then a match where basically Navi was just like, take it from us. Yeah, this, is, this is a match you win on all the time. It just take it from us. In that scenario, that's the best they ever were. Aside from that, they're just getting clapped in semis. They're messing up these vetoes. So the problem I have goes like this. If you have Monacy, that's actually where it is CS2, mate. He wasn't this dude in CSGO. In CSGO, it was Nico. That's the reason why everyone's going, he's the greatest rifle forever. It was Nico we all felt sorry for. So first of all, there's why people want Hooksy fired. Because he had three shots with Nico. He didn't even make a single playoff major run. He was completely irrelevant. Then he won those two big events in the Blast. We'll say what we want about Blast. In that scenario, then you think, right, okay, that proves you should be capable of winning the major. And you're not even getting, sometimes to the major, and anywhere near the playoffs. You're not even relevant at the biggest tournament. And at the end of the day, if you're G2, you might think Cologne's and Katowice's are good. Yeah, yeah, if you're heroic. Yeah, if you're mouse sports. Maybe if you're Narvi, even depending on your lineup. 
G2 is supposed to be with phase, with vitality. I mean, spirit's a different beast. They're not the same org, but they're supposed to be at the top always. These orgs have the money and the power to attract anyone they want. And I can tell you, the big problem you have on the Hooksy one goes like this. It ain't like I'm saying, just put a person with Carrigan. They've sat by while every great up-and-coming leader and every great other leader that had a chance on the transfer market went elsewhere. And that's a real story last year. Nico was all but gone. All he had to do was just board the plane. It's kind of like you making your point. And then he backed out last second and he ran away. And basically, that's why we're in the mess we're in now. So we can go any way you want on this one, mate. If you want to make it about CS go winning trophies, I think it's going to be harder for you. If you want to make it about CS2, what the fuck have they got in CS2? In CS2, they've basically got two of the best players. One is the best player, by the way. If anyone looks, he should have basically won about three MVPs in a row, but you can't get to a final, and you do not get to win the MVP if you're not in the final. So to me, it's like, actually, if you look at the org, you look at some of the best pieces, this is probably the easiest org in the world to switch some of those pieces out. So I think you're going to have to make a very strong Yes, I'm excited to see where you're going to go on this one. I think yeah, before we get into that, though, I mean, before we do th this argument, Nero, I, I do think it's important. Let's just get from both of you. Uh, we'll start with Thorin. What makes a good IGL, in your opinion? Because I do think it's important sure. for us to understand the base we're measuring. This yes. At. So for you? This, yeah, this is a great place to start because obviously a classic case I will always say is there's no IGL that would be amazing in every team and win trophies, no matter how good the players are. Like everyone who's ever watched football knows you can actually have the best managers ever, but you put them with the wrong personnel. They won't win. And even worse, you'll think they're bad because you'll see the stock of go down as it goes. So for me, first things first, the number one quality, it's actually one of the cruxes I'm basing my whole argument on is it depends on your personnel. If you've got the right personnel, you'll notice I very rarely ever said Huxley should be fired when he was in CSGO and he did win Clone and Karabitze because then I was like, ah, it's just about good enough. Like, if you win a tournament like that, maybe you should get six months more. Maybe you should get one more major run. Like, to me, that's fair because with the pieces he had, I do think he had the best actual four man lineup out of any IGL at the time. If you look at the talent level, I think he was getting like just about enough out of them. And then sometimes, obviously, having a good run of winning. So, personnel, I would say you have to fit your personnel. Personnel. Then there's the aspect of like how much tactics do you have, how much can you call, etc. That's actually going to be attenuated by your personnel, in my opinion. Another reason why I've never really rated Huxley is when I've seen him have these amazing stars, they looked like they freelanced a little bit. It didn't look to me like like I've never heard anyone talk about Huxley 29th round golden call or people like, oh yes, yeah, so let's break this down with this. I've never heard that. Everyone just went, wow, Nico shot a lot of people in the head, and Huxley didn't go four to seventeen. Fuck you know. This team's cooking. So there's that angle. And then lastly, I would say an actual real part, this all depends on your team, to be fair, is actually the idea of being a leader, which is different from being a tactician, as my friend MSL had to learn very hard with. I'd say, like, CV, just spent the last three years learning that. You can be a great tactician. You can even call the right calls. You can be the guy who does his job in your role. But the problem is, in some teams, I'd say it depends on what coach you have. You might also need to be a father figure. You might also need to be someone who raises people. You might even have to work and develop a player. These are like extra skills. Skills and those intangibles, you don't have to have them. But pretty sweet, the people who do, it's why I actually think they get away with a free pass. If you are someone like Acadian or someone like that, if you are Carrigan, you can have down periods because people know you'll have an extra effect. The problem I have in this particular case is I feel like I can be quite reductive about singing weeks. So I'm actually interested in what Harry will see, like what advanced stat actually decides in IGL, I guess. So. Yeah, just sort by T T round percentage. Oh, oh that's it. Right. I knew there. it. I knew uh, it. No, Damn it. No, it's, it's literally just... I think the way the way I try and look at it is because, like in game, like it's, it's always hard to know the calling, especially in a team like this. You got Nico oh, it, of course. and everything, of course. But like you can look at calling, and that's obviously important. Um, but it's also the main thing I look at is probably like elevating players, right? And for Huxley, this is important as well, and it's not always a positive. I'll admit that, but there is an element of elevating players that I think is really important in a lot of IGLs. Like you look at their pieces; it's something you look at Snappy, like and Jame as well. They both made their own players, basically, right? And then when you get to a team like G2, then you have to look at it differently. You have to look at, is their style working? What's the kind of vibe in the team, for, for want of a better term? But, but that is important. And, and when you look at G2, like their, their energy as a team with different in-game leaders was a lot worse than it is with Hooksy right now. And I think that is obvious to anyone who's kind of like, because I have to do these social media things at events. So I have to stand in front of Hooksy and just film him until they win the game. All oh, right. And okay. So, so I actually hear a lot of these comms and everything. And, and G2, okay. when I used to do it, they were tilted. They like, you, you could tell, like there were rounds where they were tilted. And honestly, it happens a lot less now. Like it's small sample size, I know. But I think Hooksy, like his actual character really suits G2 as a leader. And, and I think that's important as well. It's like, there's lots of different ways to be a leader in the server. And I think with G2, you've got, 
you've got, you know, Nico and Hunter are kind of the more disciplined, you know, they're the ones holding people to standards maybe more often, and that's fine. You've got Hooksy as kind of the opposite side of the coin. I think it's fine to have different styles of leadership. You don't always need Jamie the autocrat or Carrigan, the Carlo Angelotti regen, right? There's lots of different ways to do it. But yeah, so overall, I would just say to rate an IGL, I would have elevating your players. Um, you want to see progress in your players. You want a map pool, I think. And it's kind of a reductive way to look at it, but I think just nuke T side. Like if you just look at a nuke T side, because I think, like how often is the best team in the world over the last five, six years? Oh, almost every time. Nuke, right? Almost every like, time. Nuke just have a streak on it, yeah. Yeah, like it's, it's a classic thing, right? Are you good at T side nuke? And I think, and CT side too. And it's important because it's just, if you understand the rotations on nuke, you probably understand them on the other maps as well. Like it's the hardest one. So it's the one that makes the most sense. And G2, always been a good nuke team. And you're going to say Nico's good outside, but Nico wasn't good outside recently. But um, yeah, moving on to that. And you've also kind of, so yeah, calling, elevating players, map pool. And then they're kind of the three main things for me. And then lead, leader of men as well. But By the way, yeah. can I just respond to one little bit there? Basically, yeah. I would just say on the first point, I would actually concede that point. If I have to say one thing that I thought was a very good point you made, it's that I do think actually, basically, the only teams in recent memory that actually Nico looked comfortable in was the original Nexa leading one. It's literally a fucking mate of his guys. And then there's one more Hooksy. I'll give you that one. Actually, when Alexi was there, he, he was like the sourpuss Nico. And actually, any team where Nico, by the way, is tilted, I think the whole team goes that way because he, in theory, he's supposed to be your best player. Like That doesn't count for nothing. I've seen plenty of teams where it's not like football. You can just go in the dressing room and go right you're from like uh south africa he's from australia you're from china like, just all play just play the game guys like, you have to have morale too i'll give you that i've also heard by the way from people in tag g2 he's actually a very positive guy in that sense too and he doesn't sort of get down when he's under pressure so i'll give you that yeah and i, I kind uh, of agree. I, think i'd add to that yeah i mean i agree with you in the sense that as an igl that is important and i do think that when you've got a big personality like a nico or then like an up-and-coming personality like a manasi it's a very specific type of person that can handle that uh, and i do think that they look i mean it's, it's a ridiculous way to judge it right nero but they look happier when they're playing but how long are they happy if they're not lifting trophies is my concern and for how much longer does that work for them as players because when you are nico and you are manasi and to be fair you're going to want to lift trophies and hooksy becomes a problem right yeah, I mean, I don't want to lead with good vibes. So that's definitely not not, not the leading <laughs> pro hooksy point. It's not that a stat for that either. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> oh, there is. There is. Expected cheers per round or something. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I think you know, one thing I want to add is, okay, so you look at G2's individuals, you look at Hunter, Loud, Nico, Loud, Monacy, he's got that star player ego now, which is a good thing. For sure it's a good thing, but he definitely has it. Nexa used to be an IGL. This team is completely pigeonholed into being, like, loose, Lots of feedback mid round, not like after the game, mid round. Like this is, this is a lot of people who have the, all of their own ideas. And I think whoever you put in Hooksy's chair, like unless it is Carrigan, maybe it is Carrigan, but even Carrigan got cut by Nico. So like, I don't think there's an IGL in the world that doesn't have to be pigeonholed into a very, very loose style. And I think that just breeds inconsistency. I think they've actually done quite well to be in playoffs basically the whole time he's been there. Like there's, there's the major Paris major. Pro League are then not qualifying for Rio. They're the three big blots on it. But like the amount of playoffs this guy makes with it with a style that should be more inconsistent, really. Like international teams, the consistency is just not there. Like there's unless you're Carrigan, I think. And that is the one thing with Hooksy. I always look at who do you replace him with that makes, you know, Hunter a star player again? Is there is there actually someone out there that isn't isn't Carrigan or like someone like that, right? And that's kind of my point with it. I think that's the main thing is who are you replacing Hoxie with, basically? I like that you said that because I actually saw Thorin tweeted about this and it's, it's a little bit of a different argument, but I think it ties into it is, is the whole thing of if you replace Hooksy, it doesn't fix the problems in G2. And what you're saying as well, who can replace Hooksy to to help these players? I think the question needs to be is, is, is Hooksy, does he have to be replaced? I mean, that's the argument, Thorin. I know that you feel pretty strongly that he should, but I think what Nero is saying is, is also pointed. He has been consistent. Playoffs consistently, as we said, for most teams, I'll bet maybe like two, pretty consistent for, for players. Yeah, but again, that's why it comes back to who is G2, the org? 
Like, they have the funds to spend. If you're someone like Mouse, if people don't know, I you never see me flame Mouse for doing a quarters or semis run. Look, at, if you knew how much they paid the players, mate, and the fact that they have to actually raise them through their own academy system and almost do, like, a football, like, send them on loan to the championship and see if they're any good, that's insane that they're able to get make those runs, mate. Like, you have to compare G2 to Vitality, FaZe Clan. These are the biggest dogs in the world. And notice... I noticed you just conveniently forgot that Vitality is an international team and won all those lands on that fucking major. You made it sound like there's just them and then FaZe Clan's like, there's the fuck, mate. You know HLTV, when they announce all the players, there's never, it's like my, my actual nightmare as a Brit, it's just the EU flag everywhere. It's just fucking everywhere, isn't it? Even fucking into the breach was an EU team, mate. We can't escape that shit. So in this world, like, again, you're doing the thing where you you sound like you're making the case for Hooksy as like, you made it sound like only Carrigan could replace him. I don't really know if I'd gamble on anyone else. No, it's like, I mean, it. there's a million other players. I'll tell you, shall I give you a list? Snappy, as far as I know, they offered him, mate. He chose Falcons, always going to go back tense. I take Snappy tomorrow. He's everything hooks he is and better. He's also, by the way, a mega pump up guy, but he also knows when to hold people to task. I'll tell you the downside of being the really cool guy with great vibes who's always raising people up is when you lose, you actually do the biggest fucking loser move of all time. You do that interview where you sort of go, like, oh, it's okay, guys. Like, still had a great run. Like, Semis. It's like, no, that, that's because you come from Copenhagen Flames or not wherever it was, mate. You're just a guy where you're happy to be there. Of course, that's why my joke on Steak and Banter is like, of course, he applauds every time someone wins around. He's like, holy fuck, I've got another six months. Yes. Like, he knows this isn't going to last forever. He's not going to be in this team for the rest of his career. By the way, when he leaves, here's an obvious question Who the fuck's going to pick Hooksy up? Like, whether you ever seen, ever, even when they were winning, like some sort of a fucking rumor leak, like, oh, you know, Hooksy's being scouted to potentially replace Apex because they don't. No, he's still, you know, if Carrigan retires, Hooksy would be there. Mate, he, his phone would just stay permanently on like it was glued to the fucking receiver. It would never ring unless ecstatic or someone was like, Danish, bring him in, I guess. Like, he'd never, he'd never get a team liquid offer to build a super team. He'd never get the Falcons off. You could have the equal bunch. He'd never get that. He would never have that. So the problem I have with this approach is I'm not saying it's the easiest way to get out of this. He's the only reason they haven't won the major. But I'll tell you what, if you put in someone like Snappy, mate, right now, I think now we've seen enough. This is why I didn't make the case before. Now I think you've seen enough of Shuhi to say he, if he had pieces like this, could actually win potentially. Apex himself, by the way, why can't I mention him? Why, why is he not allowed to potentially be an agent? Look, I don't know that he'd ever leave Vitality, but I'll tell you what, what I saw in this last major is when I actually got sold on Apex. I thought before he was doing a hooksy himself, it's like, bro, you have Zewu and then Sphinx frags out and now you've got flames just popping everyone's there. Like, how hard can it be? Well, I'll tell you what, he didn't have Zewu at this last major, mate. And there was maps where Sphinx just fucking disappeared and even flames couldn't go the whole tournament MVP level. And in those moments, he still almost beat face. He was calling a fucking hell of a tournament. I think I've already seen enough from him. Meanwhile, for Hooksy, it must be the start. If the stars don't all come, if you ever go and look, guys, they won Kadavitsa with like fucking Hunter as the MVP. He's supposed to be like the third best player. They've won tournaments where it's like, that's why Monacy doesn't have MVPs if people don't know. He doesn't need actually Monacy to be cracked out. But in this lineup, because they fucked up the lineup, they do. And Monacy isn't just good. Mate, he's the best player in the world in probably every tournament. Like, basically, it's only because they went out too early in IM that Donk got to take that because he had all the stats. Like, I actually think low-key, he might just be the best player they've had. I'll add him one more because at the end of the day, it's not like Hooksy had cre credentials coming into this one. Why can't Glaive be the IGL? Hasn't he sort of shown a little bit now? I always knew, by the way, I never made it that it was just Zonic made him. Glaive always had amazing mid-rounds. People just took the static thing of he's a tactician and thought he was MSL calling from spawn. He was always doing crazy mid-rounds. He just had amazing pieces, so it looked like it was tactical because they're all geniuses. So I think you can make the list as long as my arm. The real question, again, is like, why does why is it only Carrigan can replace him if that's the premise? Or why, 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 what does he, what has he done to deserve to like keep this status? Because like I said earlier, if you win Carrigan, it. I'm not going to say fight you for next major. If you win Cologne, mate, let's see what the next major. I always make it a major cycle person because it's the most obvious time to change. Now that he never made a final, he didn't win the major, and they're not they're not getting better. Why why does he get to stay? Well, I think it's kind of it's the same point. It's in this from what you said. It's kind of the the, the point I was going to make was like hidden within it, right? Because okay, all these IGLs you're listing, these are like connected franchise players. You are not getting Carrigan out of phase. You are not getting Apex out of Vitality. Someone like Cadian is an Orper, never coming. Snappy literally rejected them. Whatever. I would also take Snappy over Hooksy, by the way. And I think it'd be insane okay. not to. Okay. I think it would be insane not to. And I think for Glaive and Shuey, and I think Kicksand's another name I'd throw in as someone that G2 want, should yeah. have been considering, right? You'd be silly not to consider them. But for everything you 
hear about Shuhei like talking to Mouse players, it does kind of feel like he's got that like Alexi B. Entz feel to him, like early on, of he does what a lot of people. Oh, I hate those Alexi yeah. B. players. Bloody hell, they'll never win the major. <laughs> yeah, they'll never win the major. That is the thing. And Alexi B. as well. He's one I would mention as well if they hadn't tried him already, right? I'd like but him I to think... come back, but I just know which way the bread's buttered on that one, mate. So I can go. Yes. Yes. And what, and what my point with the Alexi B. thing is, because I'm, I'm the same as you, I've defended Alexi B. to my friends for years. They all hate him. But um, my point with that is, I think you could be a very good IGL and still not be the right IGL for G2. And I think Fair this point. is what I'm yeah. looking at for Hooksy. It's what I was saying before about you're pigeonholed into this loose style. I think Shuhi and Alexi, both of them could be very, very good IGLs for very good teams. But I don't think they're loose IGLs. I think they would turn up and want a lot of control and Nequin Hunter would just mid-round the fuck out of them. And they would have to adapt or die. And with Hooksy, there's already the, the template of like, you know, he, he can let the mid-rounds happen, right? And I think with Glaive, the same thing. I think you, you would want especially the situation that Glaive was in after he was benched by Astralis. And this is when Hooksy was winning Cologne and Cato, right? So that's a different thing. Like, you're not going to gamble on Glaive when, when Hooksy's actually doing fine. Like, Glaive's never spoken English in a team. Like, this is a different thing. Like, and also this Ents result, like, I'm just, it's Fugazi. It was, the Cato was so Fugazi. They Look at his team! It, it should never even terrible, be in that position. It's a terrible team. But this is what I'm saying is, okay. that's one result, major, as soon as anyone's watched a demo, and they're not winning every clutch, it's back down to earth and about where you'd expect, you know, nine with the greatest IGL of all time to play. It's probably, you know, getting the group stage, fine. So this is the thing with Hooksy and, and Kicksand as well, as well. Like I'm higher on Kicksand than like say Maui is. He's just a bit inexperienced as all. He's just a bit inexperienced. Yeah. yeah. Like, but he's Don't got you. the Balkan thing. Like he's someone that yeah. should be mentioned in something like this. Sure. But is he guaranteed better than Hooksy straight away? I, I don't think so. I think it might've been worth a gamble if you're like, if you're pets are deciding or whatever, or whoever it is deciding. Like, he might have been worth a gamble, but Hooksy is a known quantity. He's got a style that the players clearly like because he's been here, what, like two years now? Like, if these That's a long fucking time. You know... I can bounce on that in a sec if you want, yeah. <laughs> yeah, giving you your own ammo. But this is what I mean, is you don't stay at a team for this long with players that are this vocal about how they want to play unless <laughs> there is a sync there, right? Okay. There's definitely a sync. Okay. I'll let her go. Okay, but I mean, Nero, the thing is, as a G2 fan, and if there's a G2 fan watching, you want trophies. So, fine, we don't replace Hooksy. He's been there for two years. The players obviously like him. He can play this loose style. It's all great. They're still not lifting a trophy. So what does Hooksy need to do as IGL to ensure that he gets his team into a better position at each of these big tournaments? Um, honest answer, I think the firepower <laughs> in their riflers is lacking. Just needs I'm the best players say, again. Okay, my bad. I'm going to say it, okay. okay. No, okay, well, this, this is the thing. CS2, CS2, different ballgame. Hunter and Nexa are both 1.02 rating players. Oh, now. the garbage, that's yeah. Just, that's just what it is. They're, they're both like that, okay? And that's one of the other things we haven't mentioned about IGL is I think Hunter should probably try and transition to that at some point, and that's an option as well. But anyway, not really relevant. Point is, they're garbage in terms of the level that you got from JKS yes. and Hunter in, like, Katsu Cologne playoffs last year. Of course. Complete fall-off. And Nico as well. Like, Nico's rating might be trending up in CS2, but... I looked at it the other day. Playoff. He's not a monster. Nico, one one point zero two in in CS two playoff games. Nico, like this is this is a monastery show, and Hooksy's not completely blameless from that. But at the end of the day, yeah, you should you probably start, just elevate them, right? Why doesn't he just elevate those players again? Yes, but that is a lot easier when it's not like your twenty seven year old star player <laughs> tweeting CS 2s fucking shit. I'm okay. not playing the game. I hate the game. Rich, right? get the good vibes going. Vibes, 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 vibes. Like you know, fucking put some tro tropical uh, fucking pina colada in Sanderson, you know. That, but you could elevate, you know, a nerd. Nico, Hooksy's not going to be coaching Nico. No IGL in the world is going no, to be no, coaching Nico sure. and sure. making him a better CS2 player. That is up to Nico. It's the same with Hunter. He's 28. If he's going to get better, it's up to him. No one's going to have a secret formula. And ultimately, like, Manasi is the best player in the world, but we've seen teams before with the best author in the world and, you know, a second star, because that's what Nico is now. Nico yeah. is a second star who chokes sure. the playoffs, apparently. And then you've got Hunter and Nexa doing nothing. Like that, this, that Nexa clutch on in Chengdu on Overpass. This is this is not something that JKS oh, or like of any not. of the anchors. There's a long, long list of anchors they could have picked up, but they've picked up Nexa. Whatever. So this is my overall point with G two about it. like the, just the firepower is it's it's from last year when I would look at it and I would say Nico Hunter minus C. That's a better trio than like Phase. Like I would have said that with my chest easily, easily Fair. better. And now, no way. No way. Like, it's completely fallen off on CS2. And I think, ultimately, when it is this kind of loose style kind of committee calling, 
yes, yes, you do need the best players. You do need the best players. And that's not Hooksy's fault. You definitely just need more from your individuals. Okay. Can I, mean, I just bounce Lauren, off that? Yeah, because for me, I'm like, I mean, I have some thoughts, but I'll let you go first. <laughs> okay, yeah, there's a few angles. So first of all, that whole thing of like, well, he's been there for two years. Yeah. And they've had one playoff run ever in majors. Like that already actually... By the way, here's the reason why two years is actually a point against Huxley. Bro, even people like Carrigan don't stay in team for two years. Like you actually, it's actually pretty fucking hard to stay. I remember the analogy before, manager of a football team in like the Premier League. Bro, if you don't win each season, you're fucking out on your ass. Even if, by the way, you sometimes won two seasons before. Like the turnaround is crazy because people don't want to blow a whole year. In the modern economy, by the way, if you don't qualify to majors, if you ever does that again, he might be instantly fired. You just lose the millions of dollars. Like that's what actually that supports the team right now. It's why actually winning Cat Vies and Cologne, to me, matters a lot. It actually matters way less to people. I mean, we've been joking on shows, but it's true. The most important thing every team can do, the number one priority above winning the major or any tournament is just get through the RMR. That's literally it. That gives you the millions that unlocks the ability to sign players, do all the rest, which by the way, they just made a major. There's the money to buy one. Then the whole thing of like, Essentially, like not very people, not many, even Glaive, by the way, was fired like only a couple of years after like when they were still really good. Like he didn't even get that long himself. Really. And he had some dodgy ass like four, fifth rotations in on people. Then you've got the whole angle like, oh, well, the players seem to like him. Bro, this is one thing that hasn't dropped as a penny. The first part you're going to know. The second part, people just didn't think it through. Right. He tried, they co-tried to run away to a team with no partner spots in Saudi Arabia and it didn't have a lineup yet. And he was basically, where do I sign? Like, that's how much he was thinking, oh, this Hooksy guy's going to get me the promised land. Ooh, yeah. And then the other thing, this is the second part that no one thinks about. Never any rumors he was bringing Hunter with him. Do you ever notice that? I've been told because they're cousins, they must play together. And it's like demanded, like almost like Nico's rider is like, right, I need fucking uh, IGL who shuts the fuck up. And then I need Huxy, my, my bro. Mate, as far as I can tell, he was more than willing to leave Huxy behind, uh, Hunter behind. And by the way, Nico, you were that close, mate. You almost had it. That was the right move. If you'd have got away from Hunter right now, who knows what your form would be, but we could have turned this whole thing around because I agree, Hunter is actually mega underperformed for someone. This is a detail people might not know. Last year, he was the only other person aside from Zewu who was, at, I think, and maybe Nico, who was actually nominated for PC Player of the Year, not Counter Strike Player of the Year at these ones. PC, just from basically those big event runs. That's what made people think he's a star. I've always said he's a bit of a sus star. And then the problem you have now is if he's bad, Nexa isn't even supposed to be JKS or a fragger. He's supposed to be your like bitch fourth guy who does all the shit rolls. Never, by the way, is the entry because he just get insta fragged and do nothing. He's just there to do stuff. By the way, he's not even as good at using flashes as JKS. He's just there to do the dirty work so the rest of them can freestyle and do whatever they want. And I agree, Nico doesn't do it right now. But here's the problem. If Hunter's shit, Nexa just doesn't contribute much outside of being a team player. Huxley himself is an appalling fragger. An appalling fragger. Every time you've ever seen him top frag, I always say this, wait till the end of the tournament, pull up the stats. It, the, he will regress to the mean. He will still be like, you know, the fucking like eighth worst player in the tournament, no matter where they play us or what it happens to. So if you have three players like that, you've already said Nico doesn't frag. Like, that's another thing. How can we keep Huxley at this point in time if the dynamics are that the others can't be fired? I mean, I can jump in here because I'm just curious though, because this is yeah, ship if you want. So here's the thing, right? Obviously, there was a G2 lineup change. No one understands why that happened. I don't get the the move that they made. They made it. Nexa comes back. The players themselves have never really spoken out about all the the Hooksy noise because there is noise about Hooksy. No, no, I saw I saw another player online, um, Babsky, one of the analysts, saying, "Oh well, you know, the fact that they're not saying anything that's curious, and we should be worried." But I was like, "No," because Nico had a chance to leave. (laughs) That's fucking certainly rich from him to say that. A former Astralis guy probably still NDA'd up his ass. Oh, Nico, I hope he's a. Well, this is my thing. I was like, "Yeah." They're never, they're never going to talk. At, like, they're, they're, no one's come out no, to defend sure. Hooksy. I think it's all. Like, no one's say, it. Literally, people in G two have NDAs where they're not allowed to speak negatively about the org. By the way, just like Astralis. Well, this is, I imagine as well. Like, they, they haven't come out to defend Hooksy, but I don't think it's really G two style to come out and speak no, about no. these things anyway. I'm with you. From what I've seen. Yeah, I'm but with you. Saying all of that, I'm kind of on the other side of the fence because I was like, Nico had a chance to leave. He chose to stay. He could have gone back and said, "Hey." This offer's on the table. I'll stay, but I want to change a few things up. And he has the power to do that. He could potentially say, hey, like, I'm not happy with the IGL. So if the players weren't happy, if you've got a Manasi and a Nico going to management saying, hey, we're actually not happy with Hooksy, 
management would probably take it out. It for me on the outside, it looked more like they just wanted JKS out and they kept hooks. Okay. Makes so I mean, is the argument that the players actually think this is working? Like I, I mean, I'll give you a quick rebuttal. Go for it. Go I'll ahead. give you a rebuttal and see what he does with this. Here's the problem I have with that as a, an aspect of logic. Sadly, this is where I, I actually have learned, like in physics, the observer effect, even though that's actually about like light literally moving particles. But I essentially have the observer effect, which is because I'm part of the scene. And even though people tell me I'm irrelevant, they can't stop like a magnet being drawn to my tweets and then ex- dis- discussing them like it was like fucking some sort of like Plato with philosophy. And I've tried to make a grand statement, just a tweet, mate. But when I make tweets and did video, Nero probably knows this. I made a video at the end of uh, Nico's time in phase that was a banger. It was basically called like dedicated to big egos. And I explained how, even though it's claimed that Nico's never called for a single roster move, magically, it's like his thoughts manifest and the moves just happen. That player just exits the team, but no one never said to kick him. Some the player comes in that you're what the hell? I like this player. That's weird. I liked him in FPL. Like it just, these moves just happen. So the problem with that, I can tell you right now, is this Nico already doesn't win the major, which right now is the only thing anyone cares what's binary if he doesn't win the major he's sort of a bomb or washed if he wins the major like LXB did it'll actually turn the whole narrative around even though by the way he was always fucking money until CS2 is actually one of the best players to ever play this game he's unbelievable way better than most of the players who've won majors but because that's the one narrative and even he knows it it's win the championship the major or bust essentially it's why I, I think he actually even considered the move to Falcons I think the real reason he was going to go with Sonic I think he thought if I'm there with Sonic and they have this unlimited budget eventually we find a way piece by piece we get the major winning team for me eventually so this is the problem I have with that approach is I just don't believe that Nico ever wants to be known, even from rumors or behind the scenes, that he pushed for a move. And that is something that now, this is where I, I'm like, I flipped my narrative now. Before, I actually think people did it to make him happy because he was the best player in the world, if you remember. He was actually unbelievable. Now, I actually think he could. I, I guarantee you, I think he could go to Pekka or G2 and say, get this guy out, get this guy out. And as long as it isn't Monacy, they would say yes, in my opinion, and they would move that player. But here's the problem. If he then doesn't win Nero, everyone is going to fucking hate N- Nico two times more. They're going to hate him for not winning, and then they're going to find out he kicked the guy and then got what he wanted. By the way, a problem I actually have with Nico is at the end of his career, I'm going to tell him this, I've told him it on chores and in other times, at the end of his career, if he doesn't win the major, there's only one guy to blame, and he's in the mirror, my dude, because it wasn't even about skill level. It's If you didn't exert star player influence, I don't mean be a tyrant. I mean, give your feedback. Say something like, you know what, I actually think we could upgrade at this position. By the way, not just Nigel, but these team positions here, Here's like the 15 players I'd be interested in. Maybe we can have a discussion. You don't have to go in like balls on the table. Either I leave or he leaves. You don't have to do that. that that's, that's where I feel like even Nico thinks it's binary. He has to do that or he has to say nothing. I feel like him saying nothing, by the way, is one of the worst things about this team. Yeah, but I, I was just going to just add to that. Like having a lightning rod like Hooksy, probably good for Nico, to be honest. Sure. Like just having Hooksy around just every time they'll lose. Oh, like for if, sure, yeah. If, if Hunter and Nico overpeak at a 2v1 and lose Anubis, oh, Hooksy's veto, bloody hell, Hooksy's veto, honestly. So this is the thing. He's an absolute lightning rod. He's covering the yeah, that's every time. And that must help a little bit as well, right? Sure. That's an interesting way to look at it. I mean, so that kind of leads me into the question of, do you think Hooksy goes anytime soon, Nero? Because that's obviously the discussion that comes out after every tournament is Hooksy must go. He hasn't gone yet. Is he staying in G2? Do we see him for the rest of the season playing it out? Yeah, I mean, it's... I think he will, because I think that they come at it from a very similar point of view to me, which is, if we can upgrade, fine, let's upgrade. Ask Snappy. If if Ents are falling apart, ask Snappy. Try and get Snappy. If he says no, Hooksy's a decent enough option to keep them but but yeah i think to move it on to where you were going with the monacy thing and everything is that i do think honestly the best outcome for g2 and the last transfer window would have been just them all to completely split apart to be honest genuinely i genuinely think and i don't know where hooksy ends up in that but i think nico and falcons falcons are at the major if nico is in boris's roles like that is just that's an amazing team like instantly yeah. okay monacy <laughs> I want to see Manasseh in a Russian speaking team one day. Gosh. I think it'd be really cool. Um, there's obvious there's obvious places, but G2 aren't idiots. I'm sure he's got one of the worst contracts you've ever seen. Oh, it'd be um, bonkers, man. Like <laughs> if it's not if it's not eight years and no buyout, like G2 have messed up, basically. Um so he's not going anywhere. Like you could offer millions and millions, not going anywhere. Um Hunter would have been a great fit for like um if FaZe wanted more of a one-to-one for Twist, maybe, who's a little bit less of a star than Frozen, that could have worked as well. Then like, Vitality, I'm sure, were after him when they ended up with Mezzi. Like 
And then instead, you're looking at this G2 team now, and yes, like I think Hooksy is better than other options available, but you don't look at them as, oh, they're going to win the next trophy. You don't look at them and think that. And you should with, with Manasi around, right? And you should. But I do think it's down to, like, you just look at the overall team now, and it's just it's just not as inspiring. Like, you take the na- name value off, and this is just a team with a superstar, like a second star, and then three bottom feeders, basically. And it's just, that's not really a winning formula anymore. Like, this, the conversation a few years ago was you needed four players, and that was because of G2, really, because they had JKS as that fourth player. Like, he was, he was fueling that argument. And now they've gone completely the other way, which is two. And that's why it's... But yeah, in terms of predictions, I think Hooksy will stay because I don't think there's a good solution to that problem. I just don't think there is. So Thorne, on that side, if Hooksy stays, I mean, what does Hooksy have to change? Or does he just continue to be the lightning rod? Is that his role here? I mean, here's the problem with the setup. The framing of the topic was that you need Hooksy because you've got this like loose style team and that's what the stars in the team want. But the problem is, you say Nico's not a star, so it's now only Monacy. By the way, the Orpa pretty much always is allowed to free, free freestyle on every single team. That's the freelance role. It's because obviously you can't micro an Orpa unless apparently it's Torji and the Chewy, but that's some weird shit from an interview one time, right? I actually think in this scenario, then one, you've just made a great argument why Hooksy's not the best IGL for this team. You know what? Who would be a good IGL? Someone like a Snappy, right? Because now we're working with just a superstar. By the way, best role to have him in, Orpa. And then we're working with like a pretty good rifler, but not an elite rifler. Again, that's enough for a tactical IGL, by the way, who makes mid-rounds. And then I'm with you. We can replace one of the other players if you want. I would say this as well, though. Think on this in a second after I answer. Tell me what player you're bringing in. Make a, make a different player change aside from Hooksy, or even two, and they have to be like plausible. You obviously can't take phase players, right? Plausible ones, like they're sort of level that you imagine the person would say yes if the contract was there. And then Hooksy stays, and we obviously can't move Nico and Monty. That goes without saying. And also, no one's kicking Nico, because what if he kicks in the gear in like three months? You'd feel like an idiot. So just think on who you'd change and then see if you're in your mind if they're winning the Shanghai Major with that lineup. So I would say this. I actually think there's a very real world where he might get fired just because of the dynamics in the team. Like the problem is Nico, Nexa and Hunter. Like if Nico himself isn't playing well, it's hard to ask for those two to be fired. And there is boys. And so then no one's kicking Monacy. I mean, look, the real nightmare fuel is this, mate. What happens if Monacy does get a buyout? Like all those teams are doing their best to say it publicly. Like we could buy him. Like Cloud9's, it's inferred. Uh, the fucking VP guy just essentially said like, there's a blank check. Like, remember, they've just got to, like, these are teams that in theory, that was, they were going to buy she apparently. Like, these are orgs that in theory should have, like, two, three million to spend. And even though you say G2 wouldn't sell them, it depends. Like, if you're in a position where the team, like, gets worse, maybe you do sell them. Because at the end of the day, if you've got, like, three and a half million dollars, that's an insane steal. And no one even knows where the market is in a year. By the way, three and a half million dollars, you can build the whole team. You might actually have a better team, even though you won't have Monacy. It depends what you want to do with the funds at that point in time. So, I actually think there's a world where the reason why I think Hoxie might get fired is in my opinion the next major is fucking fuck or walk like if he doesn't do something big at this next major because I, I think everyone knows this bracket wasn't that legit like if any team could have collapsed it was mouse navi was there for the take and i told you like they, they, they barely win fucking rounds and at the time it's wonderful it was worse than monacy was like the one carrying them through these games until that last map when jail just went mentally he isn't even normally doing that like on paper he probably should even have been in the final even as the reasonable result that one and that's without the whole jam crash by the way that's probably the thing i'm more salty about if that jam crash didn't happen, I think they just 2-0 clapped, they're out. He might already be fired, mate. And here's the last reason that people don't think about. If you ever look up on HLTV.org, Hunter and Nico extended their contracts on the 5th of May, 2022. The standard length that G2 as an org, I know it's from League of Legends, does is two-year contracts. And normally, by the way, you actually do it. They don't ever want contracts to run out. You normally do it to sell the guy six to nine months before or a year before in League of Legends. And then because you've got the buy out, you can get loads. That's why actually I think low key, I think G2, they didn't want Monacy to go. I think they did want Nico to go, man. I think they wanted to get like one and a half million dollars, then take that, reinvest it, probably not in a mega star player, but you maybe you get like a Kixon and another, maybe you get Nerds, maybe he's available for you at a point of time. Like there's loads of uh, angles you could have gone with. So I think he already could have been fired. I actually think he's on his last legs right now. Uh, just because I do believe G2 won't hang around forever. I don't think they'll take the kindly view that you're giving earlier of like, they're making playoffs, you know, they're in the mix. The people who've beaten them have just got better people or better IGLs. Like, if you're G2, that can't be the answer. Like, at the end of the day, you have to answer to the fans as well as the shareholders. Hmm. And I think, okay, I think there's three scenarios for me. If I'm if I'm GM of G2, okay, I think there's three. One, you keep Hooksy. 
and Hunter and Nexa go, and you have to find a star like because I think to compliment Nico, you want like a, what a star lurker anchor like yes. a gym fat. Just get a gym fat. Okay, if that's possible, just get a gym fat. And then for the Hunter replacement, I mean that's really hard. Honestly, you could probably still keep Hunter and like I think that's a really wicked team already. Like if Hunter's just the fourth piece, fine. He's very experienced in everything. Um, he can keep all his roles because Jimmy is literally in all the bitch spots, T and CT. Oh, of course. He doesn't even clash with Nico because he's not an aggressive lurker. I think Jimmy is someone who, if G2R this all you're talking about with, with the big cash, um, then yes, they should be getting Jimmy. I think option two is probably make Hunter IGL. And then you do sign another lurker. I've thought about that before I've heard, yeah. Yeah, I think that's honestly because... Because I think. Wait a minute, uh, though. If we make Hunter IGL, we are firing Hooksy now, though, surely. Yeah, yeah. that's what I say. I'm okay, is, okay. I'm coming, I'm coming to fire IGL. Yeah. Okay. So at uh, the end of the episode, we'll just agree make Hunter IGL fire Hooksy. You know, nice yeah, to do I'm business with do. you. Okay. What I'm going to do. I'm going to get all three <laughs> okay. options. I'm going to see okay. which is better. Okay. Come on. So, option two Hunter IGL, and then you still get Jimmy for Nexa because that's just way better, obviously. Okay. But then I'm Hunter with you. has to be in the pack. Okay. So then you've got room to sign another player, maybe like, I don't know, Heavy God. Just get Heavy God. Heavy God's really good. Heavy God can play Anchor as well. Heavy God and Jimmy anchors, and then you have Hunter and Nico rotating still. But Hunter more supportive than he used to be. Fine. I'm fine with that. If Hunter's an IGL like Kassad said on that one show, like, oh, he could do it. He could do it. So fine, let him do it. Option three is you sign an IGL, and then where are you looking? Are you going to get Shui and Jim Fat together and just break the bank? I think you need to sell someone for that. I think you'd need to sell probably Nico and Munsky. And I think you are right. I think G2 wanted to sell Nico. I heard the same thing. I think they were probably the most upset once when he didn't go. Yeah. Because if they could have just lined up Kicksand and Saw, Kicksand, Saw, and Nurse, that's an unreal team. It's an unreal team. Um, so I think that is option three, is the new IGL. And I saw a really outlandish one on Twitter. Um, Come on. I don't know how good their English is. Oh, is this the one with Boomich, that one? I know the one you're on about. Boomich and Perfecto. Boomich and Perfecto. It sounds fire. It does sound pretty fire on paper. If Monacy wants to play with Boomich yeah. so much, just buy Boomich because you're not selling yes. Monacy. Yeah. The only thing is, I will say, the one area people have made a mistake there is just because all the Russians had to live in Serbia, their language might look as, a, as an English speaker, like it's Cyrillic, right? Their language isn't the same at all. Like The, the, the yeah. Serbians know a little bit of Russian law. People actually are thinking, like it's like that thing where they go... I'm sure a Polish guy could speak Russian. And I'll tell you, the, the Polish guy would be like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, it's only like good evenings the same or whatever. So no, like that, that on that angle, that that was just like a guy on Twitter while it Look, it was a, it was a fucking fun one. Like I've never thought of that. I, I retweeted it, but yeah. not, not because really I thought it was straight fire move. <laughs> yeah, but it'd be, it'd be in English, obviously. But I think, okay. Yeah, but this, is the, this is the thing. You're looking at the IGLs and I'm just looking at it. And it, unless Hunter is this magical solution from within, I don't think... Unless you're spending a lot of money, because Kickstand's buyout was a lot for heroic from Apex, right? So how much is it going to be now? He's only been there six months. Um, that's not that's not going to be easy. Shuey, no chance, no chance. You're spending that's millions. It's if, if if his buyout's not above a million, Mao's have done something wrong again. And I don't know how long ago he signed it or whatever, but that's like because those are the two I think the two up and coming like EU international team IGLs that you'd want to get Kickstand and Shuey for me. I think. There's an argument for Glaive. I think the others are locked away. And I think those are the two where I would justify removing Hooksy 4 is Shui and Kickstand. And everyone else, if you can't get those two, I think the best option is to keep Hooksy and sign a star anchor lurker like Jimmy, like Heavy God. They can both do it. I'm fine with either. And move Hunter into this fourth piece because he's already doing that. So just sign someone who can kill more people. And Hooksy will suddenly win a prestige event and... Veto is major hard. though. No, no, not mistakes. Major though. We win a major. Win a major. Win a major. What with Jimmy? With Jimmy? I think. Look, Jimmy's still seventeen. It's. I've said him now. I'm I've got to convince him. I think they could. I think they could. With Monacy in this form, Nico is getting to grips with his two. There is an uptick. He's not. He's not playing badly in players because he's choking. He's playing badly in players for a different reason. I think he's like because he was like one of the best arena players last year, and then just CS two is like his groups are finer than players are with, but. That's that's going to solve itself. This is Nico we're talking about, right? So Nico uptick, Manasi still playing as the best in the world, which I which I think is the easiest one to predict out of all of this. Is Manasi still being the best player in the world? And then Jimmy, Jimmy putting one point two from spots where you should be like Nexa. Yeah, you could win a major. You could win a major. I don't think the scene is as strong as it as it could be. I think people are going to be scared of Spirit again, but I think Vitality are worse than they were last year. I think Phase are still really like a. A super team play team and an arena team, a big game team. But 
firepower wise, if you if you've got Jimmy cooking and Nico comes online, like Jisoo could compete with that. Jisoo can beat that phase firepower wise. Navi, I think I agree with you. That's not happening again. Like who else is there? VP of Electronic. Like G two can beat these teams if you if you upgrade and you actually have a star trio again, a proper star trio with Hooksy calling loose. They catch fire. I think they can win that Shanghai major. I think they just need a bit more firepower. Interesting thoughts. I mean, I'm going to wrap this whole up with what, what you said right at the beginning, which is, I mean, we asked, is Hooksy the right IGL for G two? And apparently, no, it's Hunter. That's the tweet. <laughs> <'cause> that's... <laughs> <laughs> Off topic, completely just random ball in the in the call because I think we've sort of discussed this at length. But do you think we'd be having this conversation if they had kept JKS? Because I mean, I know they had some shaky starts, but they were winning trophies. Would we still be having this conversation? I think yes. I actually, because his form yeah, had dropped on. off enough. I just I'll just say briefly. I think his form had dropped off enough. I think they removed him because he takes up more resources than someone like Nexa because he is a more passive player. Um, even if it's still supportive, he's more passive. You just have to play differently. Um, and I think his form had dropped off. I think the Katowice one, yeah, he was there. But by Cologne and afterwards, like, he was. Like, his rating, by the way, is the same as Nexus. Like, it's like 1.04 or something. Like, at the end of that spell. At the so, end, yeah, of course. Yeah. But not conveniently yes. the part where he was actually, like, fucking doing 1.2 kills yeah. per uh, kill-to-death ratio or whatever, which is, like, actually way above the fourth best player on any team ever, yeah, including and- your beloved Jim Fat. But even but even his Kato run, I think, because ESL gave him the bloody MVP. That well, that was insane, nonsense, obviously. Yeah, of course. Insane. Because because as soon as you look into any advanced stats, like yes, he's he's actually not. He's not. He was no, never no. a big fragger. He was overperforming his roles, but he was never a big fragger. And I think right now, like, how much would JKS being in the team have changed Hunter and Nico's adaptation to CS2? Because I think that is the big story for G2. I think that's why they haven't kicked on. Um, so no. I, th- I think it would be very similar to now, to be honest. The irony is, I actually think he would definitely be fired if JKS had stayed. I actually think, essentially, this is why you know he is the good vibes guy. Because the only angle to kick JKS was this notion that, like, he's, you know, he's, he's quiet or there's something weird about his personality. I don't, I've never heard that from any other team. I'll just say that right there. Normally, it's actually underperformance, like complexity. That's the reason they fired him. It wasn't anything to do with, like, he's a dickhead or something. It's actually, in theory, like a very positive guy in the sense of, like, he'll contribute ideas and stuff. And crucially for me, the reason why I think Hooksy would be fired is because then I don't think unless you have G- unless you scapegoat JKS you end up with a team this bad and it's only that they're this bad that resets the expectations and suddenly almost making a finals really good instead of like where they always should be that should be like not the minimum but that should be like a medium level performance at a ton that's not even a good performance in my opinion I only said that was good if you're fucking Taz like just because you're brand new to the squad for everyone else that fucking sucks that position maybe for next it used to be on OG mate like just being out of prison at this point in time Spain's on toast it's fucking grand team wasn't it like oh it's fresh and everything cooked for me like so I think the problem is if they'd have kept JKS the reason why I think Hooksy would be fired is JKS would still frag better than Hooksy at uh, Nexa he is a way better clutch player than Nexa is he lit that's the most the two most underrated things about JKS I never hyped the rating mate the reason I said that's one of the worst rosters I've ever seen unless it had later come out he said something mental like I fucked your bitch Nico something mental like that right and so when he just did normal CS stuff the reason it was an insane move is because one he played some of the stupid put his CT positions that normally you just you just accept that guy's just bait and he's getting his head fragged off and he was actually half decent at them and then two he literally would win you clutch rounds like your fourth best player without the like even when you say resources like what resources like he gets a spot it's not like he, he just doesn't have to go first that's it that's the resources by the way Nexa has all the resources there. what the fuck's he doing with it? he's not flashing anyone he's going last he's getting fragged in the head so I actually think that I, that's mega valuable because look, you, know, you remember this I was somewhere where even when they won those tournaments i was like look mad props to like the stars and i guess this is an insane run but what is it the weakest era of cs ever and then two if you ever watch they just win all the ct rounds and then they just frag people on t side there was never any genius no one ever made a playbook of g2 and what they were doing they never in- innovated some like smoke that all the teams in the scene had to copy etc so i actually did think back then they won mainly off having the stars so if you don't have the stars yeah i had one it's not it's worse the time having hooksy you can buy the stars again but like you said if you're buying the stars anywhere why not just upgrade hooksy too i mean at the end you actually backed into agree with almost every single one of the people i wanted to replace them with they're just either not available you have to buy them yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing. I don't think it would be an instant fix, though. That's the thing. And but yeah, just just to add to that is what I would say is that Hooksy 
on this team actually has a he has innovated a little bit. Like the way teams Go play on. Anubis, the way teams play Anubis is basically like a combination of G2 and Vitality. And one thing I remember, I spoke to Snappy, and it is Cologne last year, but because I asked him like some question about heroic, like do you call it the heroic meta? Like is that something okay. that you think is true, right? And obviously it's Snappy. He's had, he had to disagree. He's um, never going to say that, of course. Yeah. <laughs> so, so he has to disagree. But the way he looked at it was actually, no, I think the way I would sum up like 2023 CS, and okay, this might not be too relevant today, is the G2 phase and end style of T sides. I think he really put a lot of emphasis on like controlled chaos. Like that's a term from like Jurgen Klopp used it as well. So I think that's where I got it. But yeah. the controlled chaos of ends, G2 and phase last year. And yes. Like when you watch it, it does just look like people fragging, but there's like, there's something about it to someone like Snappy's eye and maybe not mine. I can't tell when it's, when it's controlled and when it's just Nico killing people. But there is something to the idea that getting these international teams ticking, like there's something Hooks is doing that's right there. And the point I said before about Nuke as well, you don't fluke Nuke rounds. You just don't do it. Like this is, this is someone who at least has a good level of calling, at least good. And yes, I do. I have folded, but not even folded, because I think that's exactly where I started from, was there's better IGLs on Hooksy in the world. None of them are viable options. The ones that are viable options will cost an awful lot of money that would be better spent replacing Hunter or Nexa with a true star. And, you know, because that's what we're talking about, Shuey or Kickstand, right? Would you rather have Shuey or Jimmy for a million, say? What's a better use of a million? Because probably still Shuey, because he's still that young. But I think you can go either way. And I think if you sign Shuey, you still have to sign another star. So I think that's a double investment. Whereas Hooksy is probably good enough for another six months a year. I think on that particular point, we've we've served the food. You've had a chance to eat. So now it's time for you to troll in the comments. You can let us know who you agree with, who you stand with. We probably won't care. But you can say it anyway. That's important. Gents, thank you so much. Uh, we're back to the beginning. Uh, and I still think it needs to be Hunter. That's what I've decided. We're just going to go with him. <laughs>